the sixth generation of consoles is often revered as one of, if not the, best. It was a time of innovation, and many of the series still running today either started or grew in popularity on consoles like the original Xbox. If you spend hours on end engrossed in modern console multiplayer games, you have the original Xbox to thank, as it paved the way for Xbox Live and online console gaming as a whole before the Xbox 360 really took things up a notch. But the original Xbox also had a lot else to remember it fondly for. The ability to rip and play your own CDs was almost unheard of for consoles at the time, especially when you could play them as soundtracks in-game. The built-in storage also negated the need for those pesky memory cards, and the game's vast, vast array of weird and often memorable exclusives will likely never be seen again. Also, that original Duke controller got a whole generation of kids into powerlifting. Just look at the monster. Sheesh. With that in mind, we're revisiting Microsoft's inaugural console with a breakdown of original Xbox titles that are still beloved today for good reason. Thanks to backwards compatibility, remakes and remasters, we still have easy access to most, if not all, of the best original Xbox games. And because the retro appreciation doesn't seem to have happened for it quite like it did with something like the GameCube, most of these games are also pretty dang cheap too. More people need to stop sleeping on this absolute unit and its awesome aesthetic. I mean, look at this. Look at this bad boy. Look at this unit. How cool this is. It's just... Keanu Reeves probably had something like this back in the day. Keanu. Look at the early thousands. How many copies of Outlaw Golf can you fit in this? At least 11. Anyway, on with the list. Number 20. Oddworld Stranger's Wrath. The Oddworld series made a name for itself with the misadventures of an unusual creature named Abe. The mystical Moodicon guided players through three epic quests before the series shifted gears to a first and third person western starring the mysterious Stranger. Stranger's Wrath sees the titular character set on his own path, completely detached from the original trilogy. Using an arsenal of live ammunition derived from living beings that's fired from a nifty crossbow, Stranger hunts down bounties to collect money for a life-saving operation. Though it's nothing like its predecessors, Stranger's Wrath is just as eccentric, weird, and delightfully entertaining. It's been ported to a lot of modern platforms too, so if you're wanting to become the second best bounty hunter in pop culture, the first obviously being Dogther, you're in luck. Number 19, Time Splitter's Future Perfect. As the third entry in the Time Splitter series, Future Perfect had every opportunity to be a letdown. However, the game's quirkiness, various locations across time, and co-op and competitive multiplayer resulted in an unforgettable entry in the sixth generation of consoles. It's also the last entry we've had so far in the Time Splitters series, which is not really perfect, IMO. Sergeant Cortez returns on a mission across time to stop the Time Splitters race from ever being created. While the campaign had its moments and is also definitely the best one in the series, particularly when Cortez battled zombies and ghosts, it was the multiplayer that helped drive the game's popularity. Future Perfect also featured a level editor that allowed players to create different complex levels to share around, but if you're anything like me, you just spawned everyone in a massive room and cackled like a maniac. A new Time Flitters game was in the works not too long ago, but considering all the layoffs at Embracer Group going on, we don't have a lot of hope. Number 18. Unreal Championship 2 – The Leandry Conflict Unlike its Unreal predecessors, The Leandry Conflict was a first and third person shooter where players could swap on the fly to find their preferred playstyle. A sequel to Unreal Championship, The Leandry Conflict added character classes and a camera lock-on mechanic that compensated for the analog controls of console gaming. There's a story mode that's quite enjoyable, but it's the game's multiplayer and its 50 maps that everyone rightfully flocked to. Team Deathmatch, Deathmatch and Capture the Flag rounded out the classic game modes that the hosts would have some fun if they wished and alter games with the series' of staple mutators. If you're hoping to see more Unreal these days, you might want to wait for Fortnite to die off, sadly. Be sure to check out our very cool, very excellent video on the state of Unreal after you've watched this one. Number 17. Thief Deadly Shadows There are RPGs where thievery is a fun mechanic to tinker with. In Thief, it's a focal point as players take control of Garrett, a master thief making his third appearance. Deadly Shadows picks up after its predecessor, enhancing the experience with a large explorable living city. Rather than follow a flow of steady missions in between quests, Garrett can eavesdrop on and steal from random citizens while seeking out side quests. Thief Deadly Shadows was the series' first console release, and while arguably not the best entry overall, it brought the popular series to a whole new market. 
a market that would absolutely crash and die with the release of the titular Thief a few years later, a game that truly didn't know what it wanted to be. The IP has been dormant ever since, and that's a shame. We reckon someone like Arcane could work wonders with it these days. The good Arcane, not the, not the one that made Redfall. Not those guys, jeez. Number 16, Project Gotham Racing. No, not the Batman kart racer we all so desperately crave. PlayStation and Xbox each have their signature racing series. For PlayStation, it's Gran Turismo. For Xbox, it may be Forza today, but it started with Project Gotham Racing, a series that plenty of fans still clamour for today. Unlike traditional racing games, Project Gotham wasn't just about finishing first. Players also had to complete challenges and score enough points to advance. It may have been a bit unconventional, but it was a good launching point for Microsoft's signature racing series and set the stage for Forza. Its style was even aped a little bit by Sony's own Drive Club on the PS4. Rest in peace Drive Club, you deserved so much more. Number 15, Burnout Free Takedown. Love speeding down digital streets, duking out with competition for the first place spot? Well, that's not quite what Burnout is. Sure, you jump behind the wheel of some sweet rides in a high-speed race, but the primary goal most of the time is to take out the competition in a demolition derby-style race. You'll cruise through city streets and countryside, finding different ways to completely destroy opposing vehicles, whether you're knocking them into walls or forcing them into head-on traffic. Burnout 3 refined the series' concept for the best iteration of the arcade racer, complete with multiple game modes, new cars, and more. The ability to play your own music while ripping down the street was a feeling that you wanted to bottle forever at the time. I must have listened to Toxicity myself like 100 times while grinding World Tour. Somebody get Criterion out of the Need for Speed content mines and please get them to make a new Burnout game. We even did a video on this. Too few games have pileups these days for our liking, you know. Number 14, Star Wars Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast. There are so many Star Wars games out there, so it says something when one is often described as one of the best. Jedi Outcast continues to follow Kyle Katarn, an extended universe favourite who started his journey as an Imperial officer before joining the Resistance and discovering his connection to the Force. The game is an early example of how to effectively put players in control of a Jedi in 3D spaces, with a good blend of Force powers and fluid lightsaber combat. Though Katarn could have fit in modern Star Wars lore, the character is best reserved for one of the best Star Wars stories to ever hit, and specifically, to ever hit the original Xbox. Some may view Respawn Star Wars Jedi as the modern versions of these games, but there's something about Star Wars Jedi Knight that we think may be remembered for longer. Number 13, Black. Oh, to go back to the times when video games had names that were completely un -SEOable. What good days those were. It doesn't get any more straightforward than grabbing two weapons and going to town on your enemies. Criterion Games wasn't looking to revolutionise first person shooters with fancy mechanics in black. Instead, it emphasised the best parts of action titles with cinema inspired visuals, Hollywood quality sound design, and destructible environments. One of Black's more unique mechanics is that players could only carry two weapons at a time. Hmm, wonder what inspired that, requiring them to strategize how they press forward in each mission. It's also a game in which you often have to be on the move as your cover comes crumbling down around you. If there's a 6th generation game that could really thrive off a remake or sequel, it's Black. Black did actually get a spiritual sequel of sorts called Body Count, but it's a bit too easy to count the sales on that one. Number 12, Shenmue 2. Shenmue 2 really pushed the limits of console gaming with mechanics you rarely even see in modern titles. Like, how many games have arm wrestling these days? Not enough is the answer. Not enough. The action-adventure title follows Ryo Hazuki, a young martial artist seeking revenge for his father's murder. Ryo's journey is rife with plenty of people to beat up, but Sega AM2 really gave players a lot to do and witness with large sandboxes to explore, minigames to enjoy, a day-night cycle and varying weather, and NPCs with their own schedules. Combat often unfolds in brawler-style bouts, with Ryo taking on one or multiple opponents in a 3D space similar to Virtua Fighter, and other times it's a lot of QTEs. Despite a full English dub, the export port suffered a little bit compared to its original Dreamcast release, but it remained an iconic release that fans clamoured for more for for many years after. They eventually got what they wanted, though to mixed results. Number 11, Brothers in Arms, Road to Hill 30. 
Everyone is all about Call of Duty and Battlefield these days, but there was a time when the wartime FPS market wasn't a monopoly of just two titles. Brothers in Arms stood up against the behemoths that outlasted it with entries like Road to Hill 30, a dramatic and tactical shooter that put players in charge of a team of soldiers with a series of simple commands. The game emphasised the suppression and flanking tactics of World War II, the four Fs, and gave players a more nuanced experience than the series' competition. The game was so good in what it achieved that the History Channel actually used it to recreate historical scenarios in its Brothers in Arms special. It's almost kinda surprising that Ubisoft hasn't tried to make this IP into a World War II version of The Division in recent years. Uh oh. Don't give them ideas. Oh wait, what? Gearbox actually owned the IP? That's... I feel like that's just as bad, right? Number 10. Fable. If you owned an Xbox during Fable's reveal and release, you likely know that the game that eventually launched wasn't quite in line with the ambitious promises of Lionhead Studios' head, Peter Molyneux. Despite lacking much of what Molyneux stated would be included in what was to be the best game ever, Fable became a classic and one of the best Xbox games across its vast library. Players follow the hero's journey from the very start, using blades, longbows and magic to cut down fantastical foe on a quest to kill Jack of Blades from childhood into adulthood. Along the way, the hero can be moulded through moral decisions. Will you follow a path of nobility and appear more angelic, or let your inner demon take control and grow horns? Or will you just fart on everyone and marry everything you can? You know what King Arthur would do. Number 9. Psychonauts Double Fine Productions has a knack for bringing the quirky and the strange to life. Its first venture, Psychonauts, set the stage for the company's ongoing success with the zany adventure of Rasputin Raz Aquato. Looking to join the famed Psychonauts, Raz runs away from his circus family to put his psychic powers to the test. From telekinesis to pyrokinesis, Raz gradually learns new abilities as he helps the Psychonauts work through an exceptionally dangerous and complicated case and tackles his own demons. Psychonauts really went heavy-handed on aspects of the human mind, and Double Fine crafted a surprisingly deep and incredibly fun narrative that still packed quite the punch with unexpected themes for a platformer of the time. A sequel released many years later to just as much acclaim, with Double Fine themselves now being a part of the Xbox family. Looking forward to what they do next. Number 8. Ninja Gaiden Black I don't know why I said it like that. Black! Team Ninja resurrected the Ninja Gaiden series in 2004 with a title that became notable for its unforgiving difficulty. The following year, the development team doubled down with Ninja Gaiden Black, a reworking of the new action adventure featuring new enemies and a higher difficulty setting that really tested player patience. Why would you want to do that to yourself? Team Ninja did also make the game more accessible though, with the easier Ninja Dog mode after receiving many complaints, though those players were made a mockery of with subtle changes to character interactions. Black also added 50 combat missions, giving players more time as Ryo Hayabusa, a super ninja with an arsenal of weapons and abilities used against a rogues gallery of unforgiving foes and punishing bosses. And before you think it, no, it's not Souls-like, it's just difficult. But there is a high chance someone at From Software played this and wanted someone else to feel a similar kind of suffering. Be honest, how many of you even got past the first boss? Number 7. Chronicles of Riddick Escape from Butcher Bay Before Richard B. Riddick, ridiculous name by the way, oi oi, found himself entangled with the Necromongers and going toe to toe with Bioraptors, he was a captive of Butcher Bay. The stealth action FPS Escape from Butcher Bay follows the titular character as he navigates the maximum security prison, making temporary companions and lifelong enemies while trying to find his way out. As a prequel to Pitch Black, Escape from Butcher Bay explores the character a bit more, including the true origins of his mysterious eyeshine that made him such an asset against the light-sensitive creatures. Riddick's exploits in Butcher Bay lent to a wonderful stealth-based experience, which was enhanced by the prison's ecosystem, its nefarious inhabitants, and Riddick's own deadly skills. Also this really, really extra main menu. One of the best licensed games of all time? Hey, we think it belongs right alongside Goldeneye. Number 6. Doom 3 11 years and 4 months after the original Doom shook up PC entertainment, its software returned to its breakout series with a completely different take. Whereas the first two games were more action-packed, Doom 3 took a slower-paced, more horrifying approach. 
While some of the narrative conventions remained, framing this third entry as a reboot of the series, the gameplay was overhauled to fit a survival horror experience. Though the series returned to its action roots with the 2016 reboot, Doom 3 proved that the demonic romp on Mars had plenty of room for jump scares and bigger, badder enemies. Though Doom 3 first launched on PC and it's probably best played there, the Xbox version received a two-player co-op version of the campaign and ranks among the best-looking original Xbox games. Seriously, play it for five minutes these days and the lighting still holds up remarkably well. The shotgun is still a bit rubbish though, sadly. Number 5. Forza Motorsport Microsoft definitely did something right when it released Forza Motorsport for the original Xbox. Not only was it one of the best Xbox games, which is impressive being a simulation racer, but the Forza name has thrived for more than 20 years across 13 titles. Well, now 14, with the most recent game coming out on Xbox Series. Unlike the Xbox's other popular racer, Project Gotham Racing, Forza is all about crossing the finish line first. Taking a cue from Gran Turismo, the game favours simulated driving over arcade racing, giving each real-world vehicle an authentic feel. With visual and performance customization, players could create their perfect ride to tackle the somewhat difficult racing experience that was worth the headache to master. And while it doesn't have the same fidelity as its more recent successor, there's something about this game's aesthetic that remains pretty much timeless. Number 4. Half-Life 2 Dr. Gordon Freeman was an unlikely hero forced to face interdimensional horrors in the original Half-Life. No wonder the NHS waiting list is so long. Unfortunately, things didn't get any easier for him nearly 20 years later when he was awakened from stasis to find the world under the rule of the multidimensional combine. His destiny once again chosen for him, Gordon is forced to join the Resistance, where he meets former Black Mesa scientist Dr. Eli Vance and his daughter, Alex, with a Y, cause it's the future. Half-Life 2 is a bit heavier on the narrative than its predecessor, with a fully fleshed out world full of aliens, oppressive regimes, and weird science. Boasting the types of open environments rarely seen at the time, Half-Life 2 was a visual wonder, even on the original Xbox, and segments like the horror-filled Ravenholm have stuck with us for decades. Something something something, something something Valve, Half-Life 3, something something something, you know the drill. Stop buying Counter-Strike crates, you dorks. Number 3, The Elder Scrolls 3, Morrowind. For so many fans of the Elder Scrolls series, Morrowind was their introduction. Keeping the open-world freeform design of its predecessor, Morrowind perfected much of what the Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall stumbled with, setting the stage for an experience that players would still love years and years and years and years and years after its release. Morrowind embodies the best parts of the RPG experience that's often forgotten these days, from a be-who-you-want approach to gameplay that lets you build a character from the ground up, choosing from a set of skills, abilities, weapon types and even moral choices to craft a unique hero. The level of customization and depth of gameplay that Morrowind achieved remains a marvel today as a launching point for some of gaming's best ever titles, and also Starfield, which was just good. Can we all agree it was just... it was good? It wasn't brilliant, it was just good. It will be interesting to see if that manages to age nearly as well as Morrowind has, even if Morrowind has some eccentricities today. Number 2. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic Moral decision-making was a pretty big concept during the sixth generation of consoles, and Bioware's Knights of the Old Republic handled it wonderfully. Being set in the Star Wars universe only enhanced the struggle between good and evil, allowing players to choose between the dark or light sides of the Force. Each alignment came with unique Force powers that could easily turn the tide of every round-based encounter. Customising your lightsaber when you finally get your hands on one was really a delight, adding another level to really making players feel like they are creating their own Star Wars adventure. And there's little that can be said about the story without venturing into spoilers, but let's just say that Knights of the Old Republic's narrative is light years ahead of the sequel trilogies. There's no milk drinking in this one. Curiously, a PS5 exclusive remake was announced for this one a couple of years back, but it seems to be in a bit of trouble. Luckily, you still have the originals, and they're still pretty damn good. And number one, of course, it's Halo 2. It's a bit of a tough call deciding between Halo Combat Evolved and Halo 2, both being incredible entries in the Xbox library, but the sequel surprisingly elevated our time with Master Chief by dividing it with a disgraced Covenant Elite known as the Arbiter. Halo 2 took a surprising step with a split narrative that followed the Spartan 2 Super Soldier and the Arbiter as they set out to stop the activation of a, you're not going to believe this guys, a new Halo. 
The sequel was a bit more polished than Combat Evolved, its scope getting a little bigger as we see more of the Covenant, the Flood, and the titular Ring. Also, you could dual wield, which was hilariously broken as shit, but still fun as shit. Of course, what's a Halo game without multiplayer? Halo 2 featured a two-player split-screen campaign and was one of the first games to really drive Xbox Live and online multiplayer console gaming in general. If you're looking for the one game that made Xbox a force to be reckoned with, this might very well be it. That was our list of the best Xbox games. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to smash like and subscribe. Come back next week for the best Xbox 360 games. There's going to be some Xbox 360 games in the list. That's a similar list to this one. Thank you for watching. I'm going to go now. Oh shit, I forgot. Grabbed by the ghoulies. I'm a fake gamer. Shit, I'm going to run away now. Bye.